Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to do a brief video going over some updates and changes I've made to the guitar engine since I've last produced some videos, um, surprisingly about a year and a half ago. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank everybody for their overwhelming support and positivity since I've published those videos. Um, it's really been quite flattering and motivating, so thank you very much for all that. And then next, I'd like to apologize for not being active on YouTube and answering questions that um, everyone has had. I am active on a Facebook group that I'll go over a little bit later. So if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, and you're a Facebook user, uh, please feel free to try to contact me through there. If not, I'll try to be more proactive on YouTube with answering any questions or uh, dealing with any comments that you all have. Um, so I would like to go over a quick overview, overview real quick over the updates I've made. I guess the first biggest and most significant is I've changed the icon over here to be a little bit more uh, seamless with the Fusion 360 UI. Uh, another couple updates I've had are now you can generate only the fretboard. This is almost instantaneous in generation, so it's much quicker. Uh, you can generate uh, the guitar blanks, which you see here. These kind of emulate uh, stock material for you to uh, extrude. You know, you can go through and you can sketch your shapes on this and extrude them through. Or I haven't done it; I have no experience with it. But you probably could import a SVG or a DFX and do the same. And then you can either choose to generate or not generate these guitar dimensions. These take a little bit extra time to compute, um, but if that's not an issue and you do want these, uh, you go, go ahead and toggle that on and that will create this uh, dimensions component for you, as well as all the measurements you put in here will compute over here. Let's see, uh, I've added this feature. Well, I don't know if I've really added this. I've just made this a little bit more user-friendly. This functionality was already included, but this is just a little bit more streamlined, where if you wanted to do a straight radius with a uniform radius from the nut through the end of the fretboard, you can do that. You can select a compound radius, which will give you the option to have a nut radius that transitions down to an end radius here, as well as if you want to do more of a classical guitar style with absolutely no radius, so it would be completely flat all the way across the fretboard. I believe most of this is the same. Um, yes. I've added a headstock tab. So now you can choose between an inline, a standard inline fender style um, fretboard, or um, excuse me, headstock, or you can do a symmetrical, uh, more of a, Giz, a Gibson Les Paul. This currently only supports six strings. So if you want to do anything more than that, and as well as like an asymmetrical three and three, you're going to have to do that manually within the sketch component. I also added a pickups tab, which you can see here. So this gives you the ability to visualize pickup cavities. And then you'll see here that it's all independent of each other. So if you want to have a humbucker at the neck pickup, maybe you don't want to have a middle pickup in a humbucker so you know kind of like a deluxe style guitar with two humbuckers you can do that you can also for the bridge pickup if you want to do a um, single coil uh, like a Stratocaster style maybe Telecaster style you can have a angled bridge pickup and then this will evaluate between zero if you want it straight as well as 20 degrees I honestly don't know what the actual angle is uh, but this will only evaluate up to 20 degrees. If you want to do 21, it, that won't compute. But you can, you can change that manually again throughout the sketch component. And then you have the neck spacing. That's going to be the distance between the end of the fretboard and the leading edge of your neck pickup. And then the bridge spacing is the same for the uh, bridge pickup and the bridge. But that's going to be computed off the scale length end, not the actual physical bridge. So this is a value you might have to play with to kind of get the spacing you want depending on how far the uh, your saddles or your bridge plate are going to 
extrude from the uh, length of your scale. And then another thing is for your single coil, the angle is going to be based off the origin. So you're going to have to want to you're going to want to play with that value as well to make sure that if you do put an angle here, the bottom edge of your pickups not impeding with the end of your scale. Let's see. And then these values are all based off the actual physical size of your pickup. So this doesn't compute any offset for any tolerance or clearance. That could probably be done pretty easily through your um, manufacturing cam component by adding a radial offset. Or again, if you want to go through, you can go into the sketch component and do a, an offset sketch there and then re-extrude that. And I'll go over that in a later video. Um, so all these hopefully make kind of sense. Uh, the humbucker corner radius, that's going to be your fillet right here. And then your length of your pickup cavity. So if you see, these kind of right here, actually let me go ahead and turn that on so you'll see here like this this is actually identifying the actual size of your uh, pickup and then you have your your tab length for your router which is here as well and you can change those values uh, let's see um, so this is kind of a you know one one generation it can do so if we were to do this let's create a new tab run this again let's say we want to do uh, fretboard only. Another feature I've added is the extension visible. And let's do a quick generation here. And boom, fretboard. And what the extension visible means is um, this fret extension, if you want to, I, I often find myself kind of just turning that off every time I, I start trying to build a neck. So just by default, you can see if you want that on or off to kind of save you a step. So that's Simulator that's showing you how um, just the uh, fretboard generation is. Again, that will only compute the fretboard component. You won't get any other components. Um, so if you just kind of want to try some measurements and some styles, that's a, a good suggestion. Or if you just absolutely just want to build off the fretboard, that option's there. And then uh, you saw the generate fretboard di or guitar dimensions. That's um, by default toggled off so if you do want those go ahead and turn those on um, if you don't want to build any body blanks you can turn that off and let's see fretboard um, again most of this is pretty straightforward from what it used to be and then a headstock okay let's see if we wanted to do a symmetrical um, this is a very manual process the guitar engine doesn't really automate much for you I, there's some stuff I'd like to add to automate such as if you were to change your scale length to 22, um, 22 frets with a 25.5 inch scale length, um, this value will not, this, the uh, last fret or two won't compute, so you're going to have to manually adjust that. I would eventually like to go through and make it to where that gives you a suggestion, um, calculating your fret number, your scale length, and then giving you a, a rough estimate of what um, it could be, but I still want to give you the option to manually put in exactly the measurements you want. So the fretboard length as well as your end length are two values you're going to want to try to need to keep up with. Um, and then so if we want to do symmetrical, let's say we want the headstock to be 6.5, the nut to post, let's do 1.75, and then maybe the gap between the machine posts, 1.25. Uh, these are all kind of values I'm just I'm just making up nice even round numbers and let's do let's yeah let's see what that single coil looks like and guitar blanks and yeah let's do that and as you see it's a it's much quicker than it was still takes a little bit of time um, so here you'll see we have a bridge pickup with the with the angle again like I said if you want to get a little bit more of an extreme angle you want to be careful that this bottom edge doesn't end up impeding on your uh, on your bridge so you could uh, shift that forward and then here you see that it did produce a three and three if you wanted to do something maybe a little bit more uh, not so boringly symmetrical 
you could go into the machine post holes sketch, which is within actually your, your strings component, and then we could manually edit this. And then if you wanted to be a little bit more precise, you could go through and put uh, dimensions in here and center it off a center line. instead of just kind of willy-nilly using the move feature. And if you see here, by uh, adjusting the sketch, it automatically updates your sketch blank or your, um, your blank component. Another feature I've added, which I, I find super useful, is it computes uh, some parameters for you by default. These are not actually driving anything. These are more for you to use as you build further build your guitar so if you were to change any of these right now it wouldn't change anything here um, and that's a limitation of the guitar engine fusion 360's uh, power is really in its ability to be a parametric modeler and unfortunately when i first started building the guitar engine i didn't take that into uh, into account so Again, Guitar Engine, it's, it's very limited, I realize that. I think it's a really good starting point, but I want people to remember that it is just kind of a starting point, and you're going to have to really kind of take it from there yourself. Um, maybe another iteration down the road. Um, I hope to do better. As always, there's always room for improvement, so no guarantees, but maybe a, a Guitar Engine 2.0 will feature more of a... Uh, robust parametric ability so there's these values which the nice thing about parameters if you haven't used them in the past is you can go through you can let's say we want to do an angled headstock so let's use the move copy uh, let's select the body let's select a rotation let's turn that off and let's get that edge and then you can see you can put a, a, a measurement here, but you can pull a parameter and give you that. And what you can do now is go into your change parameters and say, well, maybe 10 degrees isn't what I'm going for. Maybe I want something a little subtle. And let's do like a 7.5. And that will automatically update that. So once you have things kind of linked to your parameters, you can just go in here to your change parameter sheet and um, change these values here without having to go into each sketch or each feature independently. Um, I do plan to do a tutorial later on that is a little bit more um, in depth with these features. But as of now, like I said, this is just kind of a, a real hasty, real sloppy brief overview of some improvement, well, ideally some improvements I've made to the guitar engine over the last several months to actually several years. So here's this. And now I guess the uh, big question is, how do, I, uh, how do I install that? And I'll put a link in the description. But so what you can do is you can go through, if you want to download the zip file as it previously was, um, I've tried to do a more of a, a, I guess, mature approach to my computer scripting programming world. Um, you can go to my GitHub page for the Guitar Engine. And from here, you can see everything's listed by file and then if you go to the clone button and do download zip that'll download the zip file you can open that up it'll give you the folder with the guitar engine in it and then from here you can extract this um, extract this folder to anywhere on your computer that you'd like and then from Fusion 360 again if you go into your tools add-ins add-ins then you can select this and that'll give you your uh, your ability to add the folder from wherever you uh, you added it another way to do it that I actually really enjoy is um, a gentleman named Jerome uh, Brio excuse me I believe he's a French man and so my French isn't very good so I'm not sure if I did any justice to pronouncing his name but he, if you go to the, I'll put a link for this as well, but the actual official Autodesk App Store, you can download an add-in and install it very simply through an executable. And 
what this will do is this will give you an add-in with Infusion 360 to actually just take the link from GitHub. So you could take this. This is actually called a repository. So you could take this link, put it in here. Oops. Awkward. Um, let's try that again without the address to Chipotle. Copy the whole link. Put it in here. It'll give you a dialog if you have already installed this, but it'll give you a dialog to go ahead and do that. And um, I think that's actually a really great way to easily in, install add-ons and that as well will that will appropriately put it in the right folder. Um, so again, I'll have those two links in the description below. Um, so um, another thing is if there's any, if you run into any issues, um, I've tried to stress test this, uh, but I can, there's only so much I can imagine to do with it. So if you find yourself running into any issues, if something's not properly working, if you go back to this GitHub repository, you can go to this issues tab. And from here, if you click on a new issue, you can say, hey, this doesn't work. Can you fix this? Or, hey, this might be a good idea for later on. Um, you can go through and that will give me the ability to see that issue and then hopefully fix it. And once I fix it, I can comment that, hey, I fixed this or, hey, I don't know how to fix that. Live with it. Um, so uh, there's that. And then let's see. Again, if you have any other questions, or I preferably keep this posted to uh, any technical issues with the Guitar Engine. If you have any just general questions or comments, if you would actually go to the Facebook page, which there's actually a link in the info tab, so the Fusion 360 Luthiers group. Um, if you could actually go through and then have any questions or comments, or ideally post um, post your progress. I, I love seeing what people have done with it. It's really great. Um, I do really enjoy helping people build, um, or at least try to build guitars through Fusion 360. Um, so I uh, highly suggest joining this group if you're not already a member. There's uh, quite a few folks already, almost 15,000, er, 1500 so if I can't answer it I'm sure somebody else will and that's kind of pertaining to any um, any issues you have between using Fusion 360 and making guitars um, a lot of other folks have more experience than I do who can answer those questions better so definitely there's a plethora of information here you can just kind of go through the events in the post and even search hey I don't know how to properly cut frets what's the best tool path for cutting frets and then you could search frets and hopefully you'll find your answer um, so um, so yeah again it's just kind of a quick and sloppy um, video going over some of the updates I've made uh, in time I hope to do more videos more tutorials uh, there's been quite a few issues with the guitar neck tutorials I did last year and I'd like to think I've improved my workflow and produced better results uh, a little bit more streamlined that I'd like to do an updated tutorial series on that here soon um, as well as improving my actual tutorial presentations uh, so Overall, I hope to get better. I hope everybody else gets better. And uh, again, thank you very much for your time. I hope you find some use for this. If you have, again, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to let me know. And again, I'll try to be more uh, diligent about being active on YouTube and answering questions and comments through the actual YouTube interface. Um, so thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy.